Welcome everybody to the December 8th, 2021 um, Identifying Security Threats Working Group meeting. Uh, we have uh, we have an agenda. Feel free to add add things to it. Uh, do we have anybody new here who has not joined before and would like to introduce themselves? Cool. Um, then let's uh, wait. We have. All right. Um, awesome. So uh, let's, I guess, move to project updates. Uh, so let's, we're going to do security reviews first. Um, Dylan, uh, Amir, the floor is yours. OK, uh, go ahead, Dylan. Do you want to provide an overview? Uh, I'm still pulling some stuff up. Uh, yeah, go for it. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go second. OK, um, sure. So my quick update with that is that uh, I have added our latest review into the main repo in the reviews repo. Um, that was the review of Flux, um, included the link there for you all to review. Uh, but yeah, it's just another uh, another security review done, added to the repo. Um, that was my main update. And uh, Dylan made some updates to the table uh, that'll, uh, that will generate automatically, I believe, and cleaned it up a bit. So uh, excited to hear about that. Uh, yeah, um, I'll be brief, I guess. Um... Well, I noticed there already was, um, Mike, you already have this kind of GitHub action set up for like the validator, um, which took me more than it probably should have to find. I had it done in a completely separate way. And I was like, oh, wait, like there's 90% of the work. Um, so so I, uh, I basically added to that a, uh, a little script that will that'll run this generate overview um, Python script to constantly update this. It'll just scrape through everything. Uh, uh, every time there's like an update made to the repo and append or modify this overview page and then um, and then push to the repo itself and like you know so just auto just uh, update within the repo. Um, there are, there is a, there are a couple things I'd need to um, maybe kind of let you know Amir in terms of like GitHub settings that you need to you would need to or some whoever owns this repo uh, would need to change within their like the prod the repo settings. To get to allow Git to to update itself, but um, yeah, I made a couple few aesthetic fixes too. I like restructured some of the folders a bit, so I kind of tossed a bunch of stuff in the scripts directory, um, and then like it, there you see that package column right there on the right. Um, I just included like a single like the last package from each one, but I could totally change that. Before it was just very like the dependency confusion one, for example, was like. 50 pack and it kind of like threw off I thought some of the alignment but I'm totally happy to change it back um, if necessary and um, yeah uh, that's about it so just kind of the, the overview page should like self update pretty much now and I, I didn't delete the uh, the other one the manual one I figured maybe leave it there a little longer just to see if there's anything I can still steal from that or that that one's doing better um, that I can incorporate here so yeah so I got that's terrific awesome, awesome. thank you yeah, no problem. Um, so maybe we um, can sync up after. Or yeah, something. I was going to say, um, I, I might need a little bit of guidance on what to do, but I'm happy to. I don't think I'm the owner of the repo technically. I think I'm just a designated will, approver or what have you. Um, I will I will make you an owner of the repo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just the easiest to get myself out of it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, all right. Um, yeah, sounds good. All right, we'll talk uh, after this meeting. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. So uh, for Alpha Omega, uh, quick update there. Um, we are continuing to have a, a kind of pre-launch conversations. Um, I'm finalizing a governance uh, governance document. Uh, Michael Windsor from Google is working on job descriptions, and Brian is working on um, uh, a formal budget um, to go to LF for final approval. Um, there's a couple other paperworky kind of things um, in progress, but we're hoping to get those done before everybody disappears for the holidays. So I think we're targeting a next set up, uh, next sync next Thursday um, to uh, to finalize on that. If that means like in best case, that'll mean we have job descriptions out and hiring um, at least pub, um, posted um, 
at the end of next week. The more I discuss like the actual details, out of just our process, David, is that you on? Hold on, let me. No, I'm, I'm, I just nope. muted myself. I'm, I'm hearing somebody here. I'm just going to mute mute folks. So sorry if I'm muting you forcibly. There we go. Cool. Just come off mute if you want to talk. Um, anyways, okay. So 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 we've got that. Um, as far as the content of of Alpha Omega goes, um, on the Alpha part, uh, the Critical Projects Working Group delivered the list of uh, a preliminary list of the most critical um, open source projects to go after. Uh, that will be the the seed list for Alpha. We're still working on like, do we have enough data to justify that being the correct list? Uh, at what point do we stop? Uh, are things like package managers and package ecosystems represented there in in the right way? Um, we do have uh, a marquee project that I'm hoping to include in the initial. Um, press release. Uh, so we're still kind of uh, iterating on that a little bit. Uh, that's on the alpha can, side. Go yeah, ahead, David. Jump in, yeah, real quick. I just, I talked with Amir earlier um, who said that, yes, they're very much interested in continuing the work. Uh, there are some process improvements that we want to do. Uh, we were kind of rushed when we did that initial list. I mean, we had a lot of good information, mm -hmm. but the, comp, the, the process of trying to combine all of that was... Yeah. Well, it, it was rushed. It was the first time. Um, so uh, I think we've got some improvements in the mix, for example, uh, where I try to get basically get columns where people can comment asynchronously if they think it should or shouldn't and why uh, so that we can focus on discussing the questionable instead of the spending a lot of time on what isn't really debated. Sounds good to me. Uh, I, I, at the end of the day, I'm, uh, and I think I speak for Michael Windsor as well, um, we're both comfortable with uh, this being an approximation to the truth rather than like, we, we don't need to, you know, analysis paralysis, all of that. Um, right. So, you know. 100% uh, agree. And in fact, yeah. the, 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 what's a critical project is the software you personally are using, right? <laughs> right. Well, <Yeah, laughs> exactly. So yeah. everybody has a, it's going to have, by nature, it's going to have a different list. Right. So there, there's no right. way we're going to have that kind of agreement. Right. And it's okay. Right. Yep. So that's alpha. Um, what I'm expecting over the next few months to happen is we get all of the pre setup stuff done. Uh, we choose the, five to go after. Uh, we hire a product manager to shepherd the process. And then that product manager's full-time role is to make the thing happen and, and is accountable to to open SSF to you know uh, deliver the results we're, that we're looking for. So at that point, then it's engaging service providers, engaging the maintainers, getting everybody to talk together, writing checks and 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 making the right thing happen. So feel good about that. On the Omega side, uh, similar in terms of, uh, we have a, a few extra hires to do on the Omega side. Uh, we have two engineers and um, also a product manager um, there. So if you know anybody, now would be a great time to send, send them my way. Um, uh, we also um, finalized uh, the the license arrangement with GitHub for CodeQL, so we have the uh, we now have the ability to run um, an unlimited, uh, let's say, let's just call it an unrestricted license of CodeQL against any open source project, regardless of where it's hosted or targeted or anything like that. Um, so that was that was. Um, that was good. That, that got that got just recently finalized. We also um, Microsoft. Uh, this is me wearing now my Microsoft hat. Uh, we're donating um, uh, a like a project and a half to uh, Omega to kickstart the analysis. So this would be a uh, a container to do analysis, including CodeQL uh, and all of the orchestration around that, managing queues and sucking in new library, uh, new 
packages as they're published from from the ecosystems and kind of just generally like turning the crank. Uh, and we're simultaneously working on a proof of concept triage portal, which would be which we would expect the engineers to pick up and bring through to GA or whatever you want to call our, our initial release um, as they as they come on board. Uh, so I feel good about. Yeah, go ahead. If I can, if I can interrupt, um, it, it, I, I don't want to kill a lot of time on it, but if that contribution does go through, um, I would love it if you could you could somehow arrange just a short demo of what what it is. I, would I, be I think you're going to be excited to about it. So, I'm yeah. Sorry? Well, well. So, so, um, sorry to be to be clear, the demo is this thing. La uh, oh, okay. So, so, so this is specifically the container that runs the stuff. Okay, so that's what, what you're going to call the demo. Okay. Uh, well, I, I mean, the, the, no, I can actually do a, do a better demo. It'll probably be early January uh, by the time because right now I have an engineer on my team like moving infrastructure over to to the OpenSSF uh, subscription. Uh, but basically, it, it's a batch service that auto scales, so it'll you know you 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 dump in a hundred thousand projects and it'll just go in up to you know n VMs. It'll just do it as fast as it can. Um, so I, I, mean, I can demo that as well um, in January. Awesome. Um, and j just to be super clear, like all of this is subject to, you know, um, we decided there's a better way to do it. So we scrapped, like th if this is just MVP level, like let's get something moving in early 2022. Uh, and then we decide that it's no good and we want something better. That's wonderful. I, my feelings will not be hurt, um, particularly with LFX security. Um, if that is strategically the better long-term direction, uh, then I fully support that. Um, I just want to see results in, you know, like I, I want our first CVE through Omega to be in the, you know, February timeframe. Um, that's my that's my Christmas wish. Uh, anyway. So that is, um, that's where Alpha and Omega stand. Um, there's lot, uh, I do have a repo for the proof of concept triage portal that I will move over to OpenSSF this week uh, so that folks can contribute there. Um, any questions? Nope. Cool. Um, then with that, I'll pass it over to, um, uh, da, 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 let's, let's say, um, so we already covered that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, for I actually wrote that down to go over it and then David went over it. So that's oh, why. Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries at all. I'm, I'm just glad we remembered to, to let everyone know that we did complete that first cut and now uh, we'll continue to curate and maintain that list. Awesome. I, I, Amir, feel free to correct any mistakes I made in what I said. <laughs> nope, sounded perfect. Awesome. Um, I did. I did. What, what, uh, forget one more thing. The um, the leave behind packet. So the idea here is within Omega. So, so within Alpha, like because it's high touch, we'll have there'll be ample opportunity to like like suggest best practices and say, hey, you should really turn on two factor and, and things like that. For Omega, it is necessarily light touch. So we're not going to have a lot of opportunity for back and forth. Um, therefore, we, I want a consolidated, like almost like a like a binder that we can like give to them and be like, hey, here's like here, here's your checklist of the top five things that you should do um, if you're not doing them already. Um, turn on two factor off and here's how to do it and like make it like really super simple. Um, so the best practices um, working group uh, agreed to um uh start pulling that 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 stuff together so i'm super excited there um to have uh you know just something um because the the you 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 could have a good argument that omega is just like whack-a-mole around the ecosystem and that like you you get higher roi from like trying to lift the ships or pick an analogy um, and I think le having the leave behind packet means that wherever we go, we're leaving kind of a trail of betterness um, over time. And it's it's one of the ways that we can, uh, I guess, try to scale a little bit other than, you know, obviously this is, would be all in addition to like 
you know, just trying to get more people to enable two-factor Roth and do the right thing and enable code scanning and all that stuff. So, um, okay. Uh, Luigi, you want to talk about uh, Security YAML? And actually, I have a topic to introduce as well involving scorecards. Yes. Yeah. It, it's under, under Security YAML because I talk oh. with scorecards. It's really a subset of under Security YAML. Uh, scorecards uh, comments, basically. Yes, about the security demo, um, uh, I suppose that maybe we have a, a first schema for the YAML file. Um, I don't know if it is good. It is based on David Wands. That was really good, in my opinion. I, I, it, it, was, it, it wasn't for me, actually. So uh, I, I really need to go back and look. I probably won't get to look at till January, but I probably should look at that because I have different thoughts about how that schema should be. But anyway, go on. OK, now um, the main topic is about uh, just one conflict that remain in the document, because in the section, uh, wait, I need to find it. Uh, in the section problem statement, we have written, uh, um, uh, we could also uh, we would also like for a various tool to provide output that could be used to generate the initial YAML file. But uh, in the previous meeting, we have uh, said that uh, this YAML file is an input for uh, other tools like scorecard and similar. Uh, and uh, in these sentences, we are saying that uh, it could be also a out. Um, it could be also use the uh, scorecard output to generate the YAML file. So maybe for the first version, we want to remove these sentences or not. I, I think we should remove them as a it is. We could mention that it in the future it might be. Yes. But totally agree. Uh, but but I th I think having trying to make it minimum and actually applicable would be a good start. So let let let's let's say for now, input two tools, and in the future it might also be an output of of tools and say it that way. Do people agree with that? Is that Yes, totally agree. I uh, so for now we can just remove, but in the future we can add. Perfect. Uh, this was my question. So we have removed all conflict related to this uh, point, okay. and uh, I have added in in your sample just uh, uh, one one two um, two points. Uh, one is a roadmap. Some open source project have a roadmap, and maybe it can be uh, useful for. Uh, um, developers or researchers uh, uh, know the, road, the roadmap uh, about a particular project, especially because if there is a roadmap, okay, uh, this doesn't mean that the uh, project is maintained, but usually if you have a roadmap, you want to maintain a project. So it is uh, maybe an interesting information that we can add to the uh, security YAML file. And uh, um, some open source project uh, sometimes uh, I think I mean I'm talking about uh, for example password manager and similar one um, have also some uh, third party security assessment made by security company and similar that release uh, an open source uh, and release a public report about the vulnerabilities that the, the third party found and similar so I have had a security assessment section in the sample so if uh, the project uh, uh, has uh, a public report uh, made by a third party uh, company and they have shared in their website or similar, they can add a, a link in the YAML file. In this way, uh, we have a strong uh, information about the security uh, standard and uh, level of the project, probably. Uh, and it is uh, honestly, I think that uh, the current sample is very interesting. There are a lot of good information, not only for tool, but also for people because it is uh, readable by human. And um, uh, last point, uh, ah yes, uh, um, security uh, YAML is not probably a good name. We have uh, said, I agree. Um, I would like to suggest security uh, dash insight.yaml. I don't know if this is good, but there is no conflict at the moment, but I don't know. Uh, 
and uh, that's it. Uh, of course, David, uh, every point uh, I, um, I, um, I haven't edited the document. I have just uh, add, uh, added a suggestion or uh, suggested edits. You can approve or comment. So uh, okay. honestly, I prefer that you have the last uh, last feedback. To, on the document. To, to be honest, I often try to do the same. So that's great. <laughs> that it, it makes it a lot easier to collaborate. Uh, yes, uh, in the name, uh, I for now, I, I think it is a good idea. Don't add open SSF or our uh, name just because we want to, that uh, it be a standard. So it be a standard. So maybe it's not rated just to op the open SSF. It is a, a sort of security.md, not related. We want to introduce it, but uh, uh, this project maybe can continue also without us. I, I like the security insights. Typically, if it's meta information, it's in all caps. So it'd be all caps security dash insights and then dot lowercase yaml. Yeah, dot yaml. There we go. Uh, what do you think? I mean, that would be consistent with you will probably find a security dot MD with security all in caps and then security dash insights dot yaml. I like this. It's a long name, but it's clear. I'd love it to be a shorter name, but I don't know what it would be. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wish that there was a standard like dot folder. But there like, is actually, but that doesn't mean people use it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think docs is often where things end up. I mean, we could say uh, optionally docs. Yeah, what would the other one the be like? Rooter docs. Like, yeah, well, there we go. Is it like well, I own is that? No, that's yeah. usually for websites. That's for websites. Uh, yes, it is another interesting difference between uh, GitHub repo, I mean, repo and website. In the website, there is well known usually for uh, repo is doc or docs. It's not a standard. I mean, <laughs> right. Yeah. But I think slash docs is pretty common. Well, not, well, okay, doc, yes. Um, actually, that's one of the things in the CIPS practices badge. Most folks are using docs, plural. But, uh, and we're using doc singular, and we're actually thinking about switching to docs because so many other people are using docs, uh, which actually makes sense. It is more than one document. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, um, I wish we could find a shorter name, but I do like this better than saying OpenSSF because that's, it's not really just for OpenSSF. Exactly. Uh, any other comments? Mm, no, I, this is, uh, uh, how's this? Why don't we, since, since this is the group that would make that decision, I hear no objections, general agreement. Why don't we just go ahead and make that change in the document now? We can change it again later, but this is better than what we have right now. Michael, anyone else you disagree? I like security insights. Nope, I'm good. You're good. Okay. I'm just looking to see if that name exists anywhere else. Well, I have a, <laughs> Smart so man. I have a question. Is this only for security insights? Like, I, I saw some fields saying, uh, "Do I publish a package on npm?" That doesn't have. That doesn't seem to be related to security. So, is this just security insights or? Is it broader than just security? <laughs> I think the intent was security. I mean, we could call it insights.yaml, but oh my gosh. I'll do a quick check just for amusement. But I, I, I think the goal was to focus on security related issue. I think insights, yeah, I might take away from, I mean, people might not even know what that is. Like it'll be hard to yeah. grapple with that. I mean, I, I, I don't, it, it, I, okay, is the main pro, is it just that one field that talks about where you're posting it as a, uh, as a package distribution? Yeah, I didn't look at all the fields. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking, like, I could see also some, something where you actually tell users where, like for scorecard, for example, we don't know where people put their, their unit tests. Uh, right. So we can ignore them during the analysis. So 
you know, I could imagine having a field saying my unit tests are here, uh, something like that. Yeah, but I mean, that, I, I think that's okay. I mean, the CI best practices badge is focused on security, and we ask a lot about tests, actually. Uh, if you don't have good automated tests, then you can't quickly update when there's a vulnerability found. So I have no problem saying whether or not you have a good test framework and, such, and test suite is security relevant. Um, I mean, if, 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 if you pulled somebody off the street who wasn't a software expert and asked them, what would you guess? Do you think testing might be important for security? Uh, I can only think of one possible answer. <laughs> <laughs> who are right. you and why did you grab me? Is the yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe after that one. <laughs> you know, or, or, or how did you get into my house? <laughs> Okay, so how's this? Why don't we just go ahead and do this and then we can, because I think this is better than what we have no matter what. So let's, 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 if we change it again, right now is the good time to change it, but let's at least, let's use, at least use the best name we can come up with for now and then we can change it later. Eventually it'll, it'll get fixated and hard. So I, I'd rather have the best option in that we can think of in the dock at any one time. Sounds good. Okay, so I've unfortunately I've been kind of pressed on this uh, MFA distribution task uh, where we're trying to finish off by the end of the year. Um, but uh, I did want to report back. I was at the well, most recent scorecards meeting uh, where I presented what, we, what at the moment we were calling open OSSF uh, security, but YAML, but you know basically the basic idea and showing what uh, the the early, early draft that we've got. Um, so let me report back how I understood their feedback. Um, there was some interest, and, and of course I lead the CI best practices badge, so I can speak with some authority on, on that other project. So the, those are the two potential users. From the scorecards point of view, they were interested, but they had a lot of concerns. Um, and this is really coming back to the underlying goal of scorecards. Generally, they don't trust claims made by, by developers. Their purpose, as far as they're concerned, is we do automated analysis and we just tell you the facts. And if they accepted a claim from a developer, that doesn't mean it's a fact. It's just a claim by a developer that may or may not be true. Um, and so they, had, they didn't say no, that they didn't say yes. They said, hmm, <laughs> let's yeah. think about that. They might be willing to accept it at a low confidence because they rate how well a project does something on a scale of, one, of zero to 10. So maybe, all right, we can't find any evidence for it, but the developer claims it. So maybe that's a lower risk than there's no evidence at all. But uh, th there were concerns about about accepting this kind of data and another mooted option was well maybe we could give two results what we can tell and here's what the developer claims uh but the problem is that then the, then the school reports get complicated so I mean, I, i'm not sure it was really resolved but yeah. that was an issue i guess alternatively the confidence i, I mean i I, th I think having a lower confidence on the claims I think that's reasonable. I think having another field like like orthogonal to confidence of like source is like a, a, an enum of like data or claim uh, could allow the consumer of the scorecard to just ignore anything that's claims based if they feel that way. Um, I think, I mean, while I understand the direction of it, like for security md or any of like lots of the other scorecard things they're just looking for a file like you know so if i if i really wanted to like trick the scorecard thing it would be really easy for me to create like fake files that don't do anything but get a really good scorecard thing so if i'm if i'm a if i'm an evil doer like i can go be evil um with scorecard just like i could with the claims but I get it also that it's easier to make unintentional mistakes with this with the claim, i.e., 
saying you do something and then stop doing it and never do it again. So it makes yeah. sense to be separate. You, you make a great point. I, I think, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Obviously, especially given the current scorecard implementation, um, I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to uh, create the files and make things look as if you were much better than you really were. Um, I think, let me try to channel their response back, what I think their response back would be, which is not necessarily their actual response. <laughs> Okay, um, which is okay. I mean, you're right. The you know it wouldn't be that hard to cheat the current code, but we have aspirations to improve it over time to make it harder to fool. Um, I, again, I don't know if they would say that, but I'm guessing that they would say that. Um, uh, and of I course, then you could respond. Well, okay, that's great. But if you're going to do that more additional deep dive analysis, one of those things could be looking to for mechanical, you know, for automatically anal analyzable claims from the developer themselves as one of those deeper dives. Maybe. I mean, um, I totally agree with the Michael and uh, probably for the first version, maybe we don't need that scorecard use all the fields that we have in the YAML, just some that are more confident. For example, the security card car can check if the security.md is in the repo, but uh, the security card, card doesn't check the content of the file. So we can, uh, um, the security score card can use uh, our YAML file to check if uh, this open source project have a security policies in another link or in another file because uh, yes, security.md is a standard, but not every project use it. And maybe they have just another link and they can use the YAML file just to find the right link because if they don't check the content of security.md, they can just check if there is a link to a sort of security policy. And if in the YAML file there is this information, they can say, okay, they have a security policy, check. Uh, they don't check the content, they just check if there is a link. Maybe we can add, a, 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 we can ask them to add a easy, very easy uh, check if the uh, link, respon link, link responsive 200 or not, but uh, it is not a check on the content. And also for other good, uh, um, good uh, information like uh, security assessment that some project have uh, or uh, other public information that uh, we can't we cannot at the moment check the content but we can check if uh, there is a valid link then the community can also open a, a open issue or a pull request to say hey this yaml file or this scorecard information is not correct because it i mean it is also it is also a community effort not just a launch uh, tool and trust to it uh, open source work in this way. So, yep. I I think the the other thing that that this, I mean, which is really one, I think one of the main drivers behind behind this all is, uh, when after I think Scorecard or the Metric Dashboard launched, um, I think it was uh, from the I think it was the Open SSL team reached out and said, you know, hey, or maybe it was Apache. I'm not sure, but but it was like, hey, our stuff doesn't look good on the metric dashboard because we're doing it a different way and it feels a little bit like awkward to say well the machine says so you have to like change your change you know everything about your project in order to make the machine happy so it it spits out greens instead of reds um and i think the yaml file gives the opportunity for an alternative which is no i don't have like a security a, a per project security you know, MD file or per project security policy because we have an organizational security policy and here it is. And, you know, it's referenced in the readme or whatever it is. And like, right. so I can even give you some very specifics. Uh, the CI best practices badge has a CI pipeline. It does a number of things, including static analysis and so on. But scorecards uh, knows about GitHub actions, but we're using Circle CI. Right. So it doesn't know about Circle CI, so it, as far as it's concerned, it doesn't it doesn't notice um, most of the CI pipeline. We we do use GitHub Actions for one thing, I think, but it's just, basically it misses almost the entire CI pipeline. Um, so I I think um, 
the scorecards groups thinking up to this point has been, yeah, we know we don't currently detect circle CI. We don't detect this. We don't detect that. And but our goal is we're going to work on that. And that has been their focus all the time. So this is this has been basically trying to improve it over time so it gets better and more accurate. Um, this whole security insights, I'm going to start start using its new name. Uh, security insights thing is um, not something they've thought considered before. So I think it came up for them a little out of the blue. Um, I mean, I'm glad I raised it up and, and, and talked about it. By the way, we probably should include in our doc the old name, at least uh, used to be named, <laughs> so people know what they're looking at. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, by, by the way, I, I think it's a plausible that, argument. Sorry, go ahead. If, if I can say something, since I, I'm in the scorecard team, is uh, I agree about using the security insight as uh, a way to maybe find things that we're not able to, to find today. I think a major advantage of the security insight is it's actually crowdsourcing the ground truth from from repo owners themselves so that we can actually compare the results of scorecard to what they claim and we can use this to actually improve scorecard instead of just waiting for people to file issues. So uh, I really see this as basically asking repo owners to tell us, hey, this is what you should be finding in scorecard and then we can actually use it to to like improve it or prioritize what we should improve and what doesn't work. So I, I think it's useful. Uh, I don't know how, how, how to integrate it in the scorecard, like in the results, but I still see it as something pretty useful in practice. I think we need to, uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, uh, for uh, coming today. It's great. Um, I, I think that's a critical question. Um, I mean, it, 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 it will be trivial for scorecard to uh, download this file. I mean, you're already grabbing stuff from the repo. Uh, so if your question is, gee, how do I bring in the data? That's trivial. You're already doing much more. The problem is, how do you report it? Uh, and that's what you mean, right? When you say uh, how to integrate it. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. How, how do you report it? It could just yeah. be an info. But, but, but the information itself, I think, is useful and will drive scorecard to improve this, its checks, right? Because right now we just rely on issues, and having this is a lot better because I can run scorecard and I can look at the security inside and see, okay, there's some discrepancies between the two. So there's something that we don't support. Like, let's prioritize and not support. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, something along those lines. Yeah. With, without going into kind of, you know, design on this, but I am a little bit. Um, having something, I, if if confidence was the right way to, to reflect what a claim gives, you know, start start at medium and then go down over time based on the the last updated date of the uh, of the security insights file. So, you know, a security insights file that was updated last week is more likely to should have higher confidence, probably capped at like medium, um, than something that was upgraded, you know, updated four years ago. Um, and maybe that that's kind of a best practice itself is you know, periodically update and, and keep your security insights file um, fresh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in, in the end, of course, the scorecards folks will have to decide if they want to accept it and how, and if they want to report that, how to do it. Um, it can also be useful for another example is packages, right? How, like there isn't really a one-to-one -one mapping between the name of the package on GitHub or like the repo name and the package on say NPM. So having this in a YAML file actually, you know, makes scorecards life a lot easier because we can look at it and we can say, hey, you, and imagining, assume that people, uh, you know, uh, add signature with like open id connect then you can actually bind it to an, an actual repo so that would make it really easy to to go through all the uh you know the name the naming conventions like from github to like npm and rust or or whatever or pi -Pi. Okay, sorry. Are forks generally a problem for for scorecards? Like, you know, GitHub slash foo slash bar, 
is that the real bar or is that did did foo fork it from quacks um and i, I don't thinking, think scar cards cares you you, you you if there's a if there are 20 forks each of them is a different project and you rate them differently and in which case would it be useful for security insights to have kind of a static reference back to the real source and so kind of including the project repo in security insights so that when you fork it they're different and you can see that it's a fork um even though github kind of gives that signal anyway but like would that be useful yeah i think if if github has a signal we don't really need it but yeah you know including it is is fine I mean. yeah well, I mean, what, what, uh, now we're going to go to philosophical. Here's the problem. I don't want to derail the conversation. Like, uh, yeah, let's call card. We can talk later. Yeah, here, here's the problem. Just because it's a fork doesn't mean it's not the real one. There are a lot of projects where the fork is the one everyone uses, not the original. The original one's long dead. So. I mean, you can. Yep. I, I think it could be useful to for a repo to say, yes, I'm a quote real project versus you know I'm a project fork or a live project on my own. I'm not just a temporary local copy. I mean, you, but, if, I mean, you you could add this when people like clone repo. Like sometimes developers actually copy the entire. They don't just do like the GitHub clone. They copy the entire repo, put them in there, in somewhere on their like as a in a vendor vendor directory and then they they change the code there so there you could imagine having a its own yaml saying it came from that project uh i don't know if people want to do this but it would be useful in this case yeah and i, th I think there's two different cases historically where did i get this from and where is this being maintained because you know, if it's if it's a temporary clone, but I'm really this is you know I'm not planning to maintain this independently. Uh, I'm not expressing myself very clearly, but basically, is this a project fork or is this just a fork but not a project fork? Yep. I think I think the other nice thing about security science in general is if we go out with this as this is an experiment, this is pre v one. We're going to change if we think it's necessary so like you know and, and kind of iterate on this for the first whatever six months uh then we can see what the value of adding these things in and and, and see what value it provides to scorecards as a you know ground truth kind of comparison um and kind of go from there but it does need to be perfect day one is, is what i'm trying to say so is, is there information that we, you can expose that is not that is typically hidden behind, uh, you know, GitHub's API? Uh, so so being able to expose this as a configuration as code that would be very useful. Uh, yeah, and, and and it's and remember it's not just GitHub either. I mean, if the projects on GitLab or Savannah or you know SourceForge or anywhere else. Um, you know, we still want to be able to get the data. And yes, yeah. not everybody uses Git. <laughs> I suppose you have a field for users, but it's probably not going to be up to date. Like, who is the admin? Who is the something? Yeah. That's I think the issue thing. here is who's the user of this? I don't want to, I don't want this to be a dumping ground of all data that might be relevant about a project. I, I would rather, what is, you know, what is data that we need for automation? Because otherwise, if this becomes a YAML about all data about a project, uh, I, we will never be done. <laughs> yeah, and it, it will be out of sync anyway. So. Uh, that's right. That's right. I mean, people, if, if it's too large, people won't provide the data anyway. Yep. All righty. Awesome. Anything else on this topic? We have 10 minutes left for any other topic that anybody would like to talk about. Nope, I am just curious about the list of the 1000 open source project and uh, how it's going. Sorry, the the oh, most critical one? 
the the oh, yeah. in the alpha omega we have a uh, um, collect information for uh, uh, which uh, um, which could be the first uh, uh, 100 open source project to start the alpha yep. omega and uh, I have read that some project uh, um, um, were already analyzed, I mean, accepted or refused. All, all other one are in um, progress. And uh, we, we, so, so, so we haven't formally reached out to any projects saying, like, would you like, uh, can we engage? We did reach out to a bunch of projects saying, in theory, would you be amenable to engagement if we were to ask you in the future? Okay. Uh, and the ones that well, everybody that responded said, yes, of course. Um, uh, but let, let me see if I can, I can pull up the, uh, I think, yes, uh, this is the list. Um, make this a little bit. I remember that there was a, a fork of Firefox, for example, that I didn't know <laughs> it exists, but. Yeah. Was an interesting list for this reason. There are a lot yep. of projects that, uh, I mean, a lot. There are some projects that uh, I didn't know. Yeah. Um, and and that's like, like a lot of these, I mean, I, I would, I mean, I recognize most of these as either being like ubiquitous, you know, or, or core infrastructure or a extremely popular like transitive dependency. Um, I don't think I saw anything on or like was recently like backdoored. Um, I didn't yeah. see anything here that uh, you know I I thought was kind of totally bonkers. So personally, yeah. I would be happy with any subset of this list. Um, so then it's it's a matter of prioritizing of you yeah. know. I don't know if it can help you, but uh, reading some projects like Joomla, or Drupal, probably, mm -hmm. I remember now that there is this uh, European project related to similar. Maybe you already know Fossa. Yes. Okay. Uh, so um, some projects are under this uh, 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 this other project, and maybe uh, I don't know if you want to exclude them because they have already. A, well structure or not i don't know um mm -hmm. yeah I, I i think so 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 the way that it should go is um let's just look, uh let's just say if we picked angular just arbitrarily uh as in the first tranche the product manager we, we would say hey product manager um angular go do a pre-engagement and they re and they would look at angular and say okay yep uh, i i assume you mean this angular and not this other angular and like do you mean 2x or 1x or or what um figuring out like what the actual target is then okay has anybody else like, like is this already in progress did fossa or some other organization just do one um like and we need to describe exactly what that that workflow would would kind of look like but basically it would be you know i don't know four hours of work to come out with a yes we should engage or no for obvious reasons we don't need to engage and if they don't need to engage then great we check off angular and move to the next one uh, but it's kind of a sanity check so that we don't go too far down a path and then realize that uh yeah they just went through three audits that last year and um you know they, they don't need our help um so yeah ha knowing about other organizations like fossa so, so, so FOSS I did know about, but like knowing, like I'm, I'm sure there were others that do these things. Um, having that kind of comprehensive list so that we can consult would be would be useful. Yes, I mean, and just to have a sort of, a, well, because there is, a, I mean, some open source projects are always under sort of a continuous check, and maybe we want to start to. Um, monitor or, uh, I mean, collaborate with projects that at the moment haven't a, a real uh, well-structured uh, uh, security continuous operations and you know, stuff. Uh, but, I mean, all these projects are really good. So if yeah. we can start with uh, 100 of, of these projects are incredible. Right. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that as well. I mean, you're going to want to analyze every project and if one is getting a ton of resources from somewhere else, then there's plenty of others that could use them. So 
it's definitely part of, I would say, the validation or I guess finalization process for sure. Other thoughts, topics, anything? Okay, so with that, um, holidays are approaching quickly. Uh, I am officially on vacation starting on Monday. Um, I don't think that anybody's gonna wanna meet on the 22nd, uh, but I don't wanna presume either. So does anybody have objections to us canceling the meeting on the 22nd? and meeting again on January 5th. No objection, I was expecting okay. it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Uh, awesome, well then, um, thank you all very much for your time. I appreciate it, I will send out the cancellation. Uh, enjoy the rest of your December and uh, happy new year to everybody. Um, see, see everybody in the new year. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, thank same you. to you, everybody in the work Bye. group. Bye-bye.